Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Rogue Life, the live stream where we play roguelike games and probably die, maybe often, although really I've been on a streak and that has to end, so we're gonna do something dumb and we're gonna get Penny killed, probably. Either that or she'll come back a hero. Coming back a hero is good. I like, I like heroes. Alright, uh, let's see how this is going. I'd like to remind everybody once again that this is a production of the Crooked Thimble. Uh, if you, uh, enjoy what you see, or if you hear, or if you just like the sound of my voice reading lots and lots of text on screen, please, uh, drop us some cash over on, uh, Patreon at www.crookedthimble.com slash Patreon. That's not right. www.patreon.com slash Crooked Thimble. Though, we do own that other website, and we could probably make a page for that. Uh... Let's get to the game, shall we? So, uh, when last we left off, poor, poor Penny had one, uh, one fuel to her name, which she was about to run out of. Well, I guess she's got plenty of, but it goes quick. Um, we've got plenty of food, though. Um, our hold is, like, dead full of, we've got some Cintillac, we have some mushroom wine. If I have two mushroom wine, I can dine with one of my, uh, crewmates, so I'm trying to keep that around. Uh, at the same time, I only have 40 slots in my cargo hold. Uh, I want to maybe get 15 fuel if I can and get out of here. However, I didn't get very far last time because uh, instead I took a vacation in Naples. Because that's a thing you can do. And it makes you less scared of everything. Uh, despite the fact that the sun is up there and the sky is real and maybe you could fall into it. It wasn't very clear, but it sounded terrible. Uh, let's go talk to the good, dark-spectacled Admiral. Uh, and, uh, let's, uh, submit some port reports. Uh, we've been to the Command Canal before, so that's not gonna be new. Uh... Uh, didn't mean to do that. Dark-spectacled Admiral. Submit port reports. Continue. That's it. That's the only one I have. I am in so, so much trouble because I don't have any fuel and I don't have any money. I may have to sell that Centilac after all. Uh, continue. Uh, I can't get a little fuel to cover it because it requires a minimum of four favors. Uh, I am in a lot of trouble. Uh, let's go talk to the Alarming Scholar. Who should, uh... Oh, that's right. I have an intriguing snippet now. Uh, I gained fragments and echoes and lost the, the snippet. Uh, he, she, it continues to love me, which is wonderful. Uh, God, I am in so much trouble. Okay, who's the new recruit that's available? Okay, it's just a Zaylor, which I do need more of, but I'm broke. So everything's bad. Everything's bad. Uh, Roser's Wharf? Oh, yes. Tattooed Courier Parrot will pay well for a consignment of Scintillac. Her skin is crowded with bright ink. Her smile is cocky. Uh, let's do it. 105 Echo. Thank goodness. Uh, the Rose Market is concluded. Wonderful. That's great. I like money. Labyrinth of Tigers. There's still nothing I can do there. Uh, let's go to London. Uh, if I carouse at Wolfstack Docks, I can lose Echo. I get free home. I might get lucky in uh, more ways than one. Uh, how much will this cost me? That's a lot. It's always good to carouse at Wolfstack Docks. I've got the recent news. I've lost my evening. I was fortunate. I lost all my terror. It's wonderful. Oh, there we go. The trouble has happened. Trouble and romance. That night in Wolfstack, you find yourself sharing a table with... A likely lass. A dapper chap. Someone whose name you do not afterwards recall. Oh my goodness. Uh... Let's hook up with a dapper chap. It'll be good for us. No, it's a likely lass. She tipsily claims to be a spy. Whatever she is, she's easy to like, and when the evening ends, you're still together. An interlude. The next morning, she gives you a pewter locket. 
As you reach for it, she grips it briefly in her fist. Don't you dare forget me, she says. So that storyline is started. I wonder where that will go. Uh, too bad Penny's not going to come back because she's going to get killed uh, trying to find the possibly non-existent empire. Oh, God, I'm going to buy... Let's get up to 12. Um, God, I should get more. Uh, how's my hold doing? 24, 40. I mean, I guess. I guess. Let's let's do this. We're going, we're going whole hog. Uh, let's get 15 fuel. Oh, it says it right there. Great, wonderful, awesome. Uh, let's get 15 fuel. Uh, let's go for broke. Uh, let's find the damned empire of hands. Oh, uh, like to welcome Brianna to the chat, our most loyal viewer. I should make her a moderator. I might have already done that. We are full of fuel, full of supplies, full of supplies. I probably should have changed the balance of that a little bit. Um, the alarming scholars as happy as they can be. The Ventner's desire isn't set. In fact, I just set us back by selling the Scintillac. Uh, let's... Oh, wait. Is there anything I can do? Can I read the papers? No, I don't have an evening left. Visit your study. Oh. If I had an elegant townhouse. Grr. I'm going to come back with a thousand echo after this. It'll be great. Let's see where we're going. Uh... I figure the best thing to do might be to go to Demo Island, go drop by Hunter's Keep, go to Demo Island, and uh, then just head straight east. Go all the way east until there's no more east to go. Which is a thing that happens because we're underground and things can have barriers because the world's not round down here. Also, everything's horrible and there's probably like an edge. I don't know. I've never been there. Something always kills me. On the plus side, I've got zero terror, uh, which means that most of the most hideous beasts of the sea, if I understand right, just won't show the fuck up. So, uh, I should be fine. Uh, besides, I should drop in on the sisters. I don't remember which ones of them I've spoken to. I think it's all three. Uh, so, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, we'll find out. It'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be fine. Hunter's Keep. Uh, reconnoitre the island because everything's good. Uh, news, news! Hello, sisters! I've got news! Um, I guess I'll do Phoebe. F uh, phrasing. Are we not saying phrasing anymore? Uh, oh god, I've got Storm's attention. That's all for now. I know mystery, memory, distant shore. Is this the same story she told before? I'm not sure. I'm gonna read it. Phoebe is soft-voiced, watchful, unpredictable. Here's a story. Phoebe has a story to tell of two lovers parted by water, of a raven that carried messages, of a fragment of the moon. She beats time on the table as she speaks as if to a song only she can hear. The effect is hypnotic. Your attention drifts out the, through the skylight of the dining room to the false stars glittering on the roof of the cavern. You drift like a puffball spore. The Untersee shimmers below. Islands lie like mineral specimens on black velvet. Ships bob like wood chips between the islands. Vast spined things pulse in the depths. There is a scent, like a scent before a storm. The storm came, says Phoebe quietly. Everything changed. Somewhere in there, you finish the last course. The scowling maid reluctantly serves cheese and bath all of her biscuits. You're acquainted with the sisters, but something has changed. Okay. Spoilers, I do know that something actually does significantly change. Uh, oh. I've been there, okay. So I'm gonna go to Demo Island. Uh, which I can't remember what was special about it. Or if anybody asked me to bring them anything. I'm not even scared right now. What could be in these depths? What terror could I face? Isn't it nice that the music's on right now? Oops. Hey, Brianna, is the music too loud? 
now that I've uh, remembered to turn on this the sound. Here the wilder airs mingle with the airs at the near reaches. Demo's gate, named for the navigator lost above. How did his cuff? How did his bones come below? The Phosgene Peaks. The waves are flecked with light. Oh, this is the Iron and Misery Cope Funging Station. I should have known. I came to spy on here, and then I left, because that's all I really wanted to do. I will compile a port report, because I should always do that. Uh, I can gather supplies here. INM has a funger operation here, felling giant bulgious shrooms for building materials, harvesting curalee for its medicinal properties. It's a desperate little outpost of something like civilization. Up puffs the affable factor. Oh, hello, Captain. Thank God for visitors. We'd go quite mad out here, otherwise, ah, so quite mad. How can we be of assistance? Uh, I should have tea with the old factor because, uh, yeah. Oh, wow, he gave me supplies. You sit on the veranda of the factor's house, looking out over the fungal jungle. An expanse of green and sour gold. The air is thick with hovering spores. The scones are stale. Even the tea has a hint of mildew, but the factor is good company. He shares odd stories about the ice and roses of Irem, the monstrosities of the Seal of Lilies, and the little restaurant in Venderblight, where he enjoyed the most extraordinary seafood. Venderbite! I know! I never met a tomb colonist who could cook, but you must visit the place. Do you know it? Yes, I do fucking know it. It's horrible. Uh, we also had a load- he also had a load of bulgus frond carted aboard your ship. He waves for your thanks. I've eaten so much of the stuff, I fear that I may be transformed entirely into fungus. He leans confidently towards you. It happens, you know. But one does not have to eat rather a lot of it first. One does. No, it doesn't. That would be different. Uh, I'm totally gonna try and gather supplies. I'm on a hell of a... Ah, fucked. A fug of dread. The spores lie thick on your face. They coat your tongues. One crewman begins to whimper. Oh, Christ, he says. They've reached my heart. I think I'll be harvest yet. Harvest yet! You have to drag him back to the ship before he's calm again. Well, that's great. I'm not gonna get more terror. That would be awful. I could buy provisions, but fuck that. Money? Ha! Ah. Who has that, even? I don't even know what echoes are. You get to be terrorized by sipping sounds as I drink my coffee, because it's that kind of day. I think I should do one of these, it's just an extended impersonation of Matt Lee's, and see how it goes. Because, honestly, I keep doing impersonations of him, and no one's called me on it, because because there are very few people in the audience. Hmm. If there's someplace awful, I'm supposed to take my gall-eyed gall -eyed engineer as well, so that her eyes will hatch. Which will be great. Come back, Zebat. Gators Morn lies a long way to the east. Hmm. I'm headed that way. Patrick's Lot. The air trembles, a breath of chip. Wait a minute, isn't Gators Morn the pirate hub? That could be bad, if it's a pirate's hub. Oh, shit balls. Okay. Did I miss the dock? Yes, I did. Hello, Gators Morn proper. I need to survey you. Please don't be a solid dock. Okay, good. I didn't think so. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Oh. 
Oh, that's just a filter being cut out over the image of my light. That's how they're doing that. Dark Gators Morn. The morn is a stalagmite vast as a crag, and its foot has no safe harbors. The Corsair Citadel nestles halfway up. An intricate system of winches like, takes the strain, and your ship rises slowly from the Z. Her hull creaks in protest. Grizzled sailors groan and cling to the stanchions. Higher, higher. Now the Unterzee simmers like glass below. Children clamoring into crevices cheer and wave alarmingly. The winch motor slows, and you hang in a cradle next to a red-bowed pirate cutter. An evening at the Errant Limpet. I don't have enough money. Uh, explore the morn! There's a... Uh, here, let's do this. There's a surprising quantity of actual landscape on the morn. It's vertical, admittedly, but once you find the beast paths and urchin roads, you can traverse it as if you would a rocky moor, with the additional throatful of lurching terror. The view from above. A high place, the Z like a rippled sheet of night green jade, the roof of the neath above, bellied with stalactites and prickled with false star, look out across the water. What are you thinking of? I can pray to the gods. I can think of my past as a priest. I haven't ever... Sure, I'll play this. This is unlike your old life in almost every way, save this. You are still responsible for the lives and souls of those in your charge. And it seems to be a little more natural now. Gain five hearts? Uh, I can gather intelligence, try to get a port report. That is a really good chance that I will get hurt. Uh... Overhear rumors from a pirate poet. Yeah! Landlubbers fear pirates. Pirates fear the poet. Lies, nonsense, glimmers. Some say she's a clay man who freed herself with the power of verse. Possible. Others insist she's the personal muse of the king with a hundred hearts. Unlikely. One claims she sails on a living ship made of the still-screaming skulls of her victims. More sober voices muttered that no, it's just an Aclaeus class vessel. Whatever the truths, few have fought her and survived to tell the tale. Only the bravest of captains risk the lonely parts of the Z where her flag is said to fly. Of a pirate poet. Oh, okay. Not sure. Cold shoulders at the errant limpent. Conversation quiet. Oh, sorry. Another afternoon at the errant limpet. A drinking den by the dock cradles is a good place for your crew to find companionship and let off steam, but although Gator's Morn is a free port, the Corsairs prefer their own and look askance at respectable Londoners. Conversation quietens. Is that a real word? As the drinkers look around. You've been here too long, and they're attracting the wrong kind of attention. Time to move on. Do I try? Gator's Morn's a... that's really... Ah. You're eavesdropping on the captain of a lean black cutter when her first mate spots you. In the ensuing fracas, one of the crew is smashed through a flimsy wooden wall. He falls 200 feet to be impaled on a smaller stalagmite in the shadow of Morn, and dies instantly. It's a painless death, but his slowly mummifying corpse will hang there for decades to come. Ships will salute it. Successive generations of children will name it, rename it, fling stones, dare each other to climb the pinnacle and kiss its fleshless head. I do have a port report of Gator's Morn. I have another tale of terror. I've gained more terror. I'm bad at veils. And now I'm down a crew. Thanks, everyone. Let's go. Let's go. Do you have shops, actually? This might be worth it. Oh. Oh, God, I can buy souls. Oh, I can sell souls. Oh, God. Oh, I can buy concealed compartments. Interesting. Interesting. Let's go. Oh, fuck. Meow. I don't want no pirates. I only got 12 terror. Everything's fine. I don't 
don't want to get in a fight with a pirate. That would be super bad. Uh, no, no, no. No, 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 it spotted me. Everything's bad. Let's go. Wait, did I just find the conate? Oh, man. Everything's bad. Well, dear, dear viewers, if you've ever been wondered what Ever wondered what happened to Genghis Khan, other than dying in his sleep while being ministered to by doctors that didn't know what they were doing? You can find the real answer here in the Khanate. I'm gonna stop in Khan's glory and then probably be murdered for it because I don't think this is the foreign quarter. Because it's called Khan's glory for crying out loud. Khan's glory. Here are the palaces of the Khan and his court. Each a fortress to itself. Sleek lords and ladies in belted robes breakfast on balconies. An unlikely antelope peeks at you from a park. Guns rotate easily on motorized gimbals. I can offer a variety of gifts to people. The clan is named for a sizable and ferocious fish. Unlock a drowning pearl. Sure. I have favors, Taman's mercy. When did I get drowning pearl? In the yellow chamber of the palace entrance, m entrance, masked functionary scrutinizes the pearls. Yes, she says. Even through the mask, she does not meet your eyes. She rises, turns, and leaves. Crews past the clan palaces. Khan's glory has steely beauty, but the clan lords are ever suspicious of spies, and those gun emplacements are vigilant. Yeah, let's do this. A warning shot. Sculpted curves of stone and silver. Coral statue. A triple salvo from a gun emplacement scars your bow! Turn back to the sanctioned harbor quickly. You now have two white and golds are watching you menaces. That's all for now. I took some damage. Let's go. Let's see if we can find the foreign quarter and actually do things in town. Because I am not yet far enough east, I believe, to find the Empire of Hands. But I know that there's a second port here. Because I've been to it. I don't think it's going to be in Khan's heart, though. At least I'm getting fragments. Ah, there it is. I guess it is in Khan's heart. Or I'm about to get shot again. Because, you know, like you do. <laughs> the Copper Quarter. That sounds sounds delightful. Really, it does. Khan's Heart. London's rival. An oasis of light in the salt black wastes. Canals thread the painted city, street lamps glow, and water taxis putter. Seek a commercial license. The Kaganians dislike merchants, and they dislike foreigners. Foreign merchants induce paroxysms of antipathy. Perhaps sufficient bribes will buy your way into the Nephrite Quarter. Pay a storyteller. Gather a port report. We'll get killed. Seek intelligence. We'll get killed. Okay, let's do this. I have their suspicion, eyes everywhere. Your listeners meet your questions with courteous, frightened silence. The back of your neck prickles. Don't turn around. Seek a commercial license. Not here, surfacer. Surfacer. But the Cogians have generations underground. And to them, all Londoners are surfacers. It seems you'll need to go to Khan's glory, the nearby palaces of the nobility, to seek a license. And we've seen how that goes. Uh, I'm not going to take more uh, damage here. I'm not allowed to trade. It's time to go. Let's just go east. Let's go. Let's go one more layer east, and then we'll turn south, and we'll see what happens. It 
send out our batty bat bat. Because maybe the batty bat bat will find something. Khan's shadow. What? There's more to the Khanate than these two terrifying ports? I did not know. Oh. Oh no. Khan's Shadow. Wanderer's Haven. I see pirate vessels. I see lots of pirate vessels. What have I found? Long ago, the Khanate turned its back on its warrior traditions. It has no place for pirates and would-be nomads. So here, in the shadow, the exiles make their home amid a hundred wrecked, grounded, decommissioned ships. Acquire the doomed monster hunter. What do I need to do that? Element of Dawn. So many malcontents, so little time. Conniving, debauching, speechifying, drinking, singing, speeching, poeting, now and then a drunken duel, very occasionally a savage ritual murder. Do you guys have shops? You do. Of course you do. I can buy all sorts of weird things. I could sell my mushroom wine for, like, nothing. Oh, a mirror catch box. Oh, a very angry dream snakes. Okay, sure. Yep. Yep, that's the thing. Let's go. Let's just get out of here. That's not... I always double tap. Always the double tap. Watch the Empire of Hands be like in the very far northeast, and thus I don't find it. Nuncio. It's a long way to the northeast. Might be able to get supplies in Nencia. Oh god, I'm almost out of fuel. Compared to getting back, I'm not out of fuel, out of fuel. Scuttering and chittering in the corners of the hold, humped shapes on the deck rail, ratsy air emboldens the, verdin, the vermin. At some point, I will get through a full sentence without uh, stumbling. Some distance to the north. Yep, I thought so. Taciturn functionaries walk the docks in the uniforms of postmen. An enormous crowned statue casts a chilling shadow. The shadows gleam with rats' eyes, their ceaseless chittering rolls like the tide. Go to the postman's tavern, explore along the beach, or assemble a port report. I will assemble a port report. There's a statue. There's the statue in the middle of the island. That's hard to miss. There's the way everyone wears a uniform and the way that they each call each other by their ranks in the postal service. There's the way the port authorities refer to regulations. There's the jargon, the curious habit of referring to any used up thing as cancelled, as though the whole world were made of stamps. You write about a vestigial bureaucracy and about trappings of order restrained far from home go to the postman's tavern. The inky blotter, it's called. The sign doesn't look like much. Faces turn in your direction, but no one seems surprised to have a new arrival on the island. Listen in. Lit by the inky blotter. Lit by two roaring fires, one at either end of the room, the bartender is in postman's uniform. Like almost all the patrons, a noseless postal inspector called Blunt Thomas delivers the drinks, clears table, stacks firewood. Fishmen brag about the fish that got away. Postmen brag about hard deliveries. Amazing what you get for a penny stamp. Delicate bottles lowered down chimneys on a rope. Do not fold under any circumstance. Letters curled through a narrow slot. 
ratting, rattling, groaning crates brought back to the same address every day for 22 days running. The windows they pried open, the servants they bribed, the delivery surcharges they paid out of their own salaries just to get rid of one more packet. It's hard to tell which they hate more, the senders of the mail or their recipient. Stands to reason. If the message was, welcome, was a welcome one, they'd tell their other fellow in person, reflects the hairless postwoman. Ask why the local currency consists of rats. Two strings of rats for a pint of ale, three strings for wine, five for the tolerable brandy under the bar. Scarcity is not an issue. The hairless postwoman at the end of the bar smiles mirthlessly, or maybe it's just the lack of eyebrows that does it. Long enough carrying the things around, you get into the habit, she says. Then she tells you that if you stay out late enough, you'll get some of the postmen making the procession to the center of the island, stringing up rats around the statue yet like yuletide decorations, in prayer to an ancient deity of this place. From the coughing and choking elsewhere in the pub, you'll guess that this is a story not often told to newcomers. Ask why the hairless postwoman is hairless. Legacy of some interesting explosive package, maybe? No, she says. Kurt, not pleased, you asked. Still had eyebrows when I came to Nuncio. The postman at the next bit bench diverts you, speaks in a low voice. Lots of people find habits they can't deliver when they can't deliver the post anymore. This one has a plucking habit. Best learn not to notice. You glance up. The hairless postwoman is glaring at you. Ask about the big statue in the center of the island. If there were a guidebook for visitors, it would have to be the first entry. The monumental postman. Oh, that. It's all of us, isn't it? Sort of the spirits of the island. Most of them don't seem troubled for more, than an exp more of an explanation than that. Though the hairless postwoman tells you that it didn't always look like a fallen London postman at all. It used to have a different face and a more old-fashioned outfit. Ask how they all occupy themselves all day. There must be more than this. Dead letter office. Big building, center of town. Hard to miss. You can work there, too, if you want. It's not clear whether this is a generous offer or a threat. Go back. Try a shift at the dead letter office. There's a sign of a cancelled stamp over the door. Extensive tour. Blunt Thomas takes you around the office, a small collection room where those retrieving letters may state their business, a much larger set of back offices where newly arrived letters and parcels are collected and sorted, a dank, briny smell that never goes away, presumably because so many of the parcels spent time in the water before they arrived here. In the back room is a machine manned, ratted, by a postal rat, a ratus faber in a pinstriped hat. It shovels sludge-damp letters into the machine's hopper, and they come out dried, cleaned, pressed, and sorted into slots by size and quality of paper. Converse with the postal rat. How did he get into this line of work? Cultish. The postal rat has a pair of spectacles on and is, a re -letter and is re lettering the front of a water-damaged envelope, working over the original letters with a tiny brush and ink pot. The repairs are likely to take most of the afternoon. I think I... I like to think of myself as being in the resurrection business, he says, stopping to look at you seriously for a moment. Where circumstances permit, taking the dead letters and making them alive again doesn't often work, but when it does, a miracle. Offer employment to the postal rat's niece. He asks it as a favor. She sounds well-trained and eager. Strongest possible recommendation. The postal rat is graceful and says so at length in a variety of ways. Only so much work to go around a nuncio. She keeps ask asking to assist me here. As you can see, a gesture of at heaps of loose gears and unhooked chains, I hardly require any assistance, and my research is so delicate at this stage. But she's an excellent worker, very bright, like her mother. I have a Ratus Farber Faber assistant. Converse with the postal rat. 
Why doesn't it make a machine like this one back in London? Might lead to fewer dead letters in the first place. Oh, no, no, no. That won't be permitted at all. There are strict rules about the initial handling and sorting of a post. An experimental machine might mangle the letters. It's only the dead material that's unimportant enough to be trusted to a rotus favor. His voice isn't bitter, but he twists a coil so hard that it springs sideways out of the machine and pings off your shoe. Ask the postal rat for the key to the basements. There are doors in the dead letter office that you've never seen opened. Surely you can be trusted. No trouble at all. He's surprised by the request. Most postmen don't like it down there. No one ever asks for a key, but he'll cut you a new one. Just to be careful in there and come out if you start to feel wrong. Open the back rooms. The key is warm in your pocket. Deep and deeper. This might be where Penny dies. You had expected a few shelves of supplies, more files of letters, a few years older. No. It is a pit, so deep that the lantern light does not show the bottom. A spiral walkway descends along its wall. That spiral opens wider as it goes, as if you were looking through the narrow end of a very large shell. Lining the walls are shelves and nooks, unevenly sized. Some of them are a few inches square and contain single scrolls of papyrus. Others support crates bigger than coffins. They're made of woody fungus, grown to meet requirements. There's no marks of carpentry or any of the postal rat's handiwork. Three turns down the spiral, you feel you can't breathe. Time to leave. Come back later, maybe. I've gained terror, an occurrence, more occurrences. Tell the postal rat about my basement findings. Troubled, but not surprised. They say they've that's been there since before we came, before there were Londoners in the Neath, before there was a dead letter office. There was someone else, and they built the last layer on top of what was there before, and so on. When you press him a little further, he says, I've been down there. Didn't like it much. But I wanted to test my machine. Thought if I could handle some of the very old dead letters, that would be a good sign, you know. Evidence the machine was were in working order. Good, strong, sorting categories, and so forth. He pauses. There's letters down there that set your hair on fire if you so much as look at them. Set the bald patch on my... See the bald patch on my left leg? That wasn't a machine accident, oh no. That singed... That singed right off as soon as I put my nose into one of them letters. Tale of Terror, Extraordinary Implication. Uh, I've got Cultivating Friendships with Postman hasn't changed because it's higher than five. Descend into the basement with a flame. I need a flare and a bunch of Foxfire candles. Or I can do it on my own. My mirror's quality is terrible. All right, folks, I'm not going to get her killed doing this. Are there shops? I could buy fuel. Nope, I can't. Never mind. That, that would be cute and all. Uh, let's uh, explore along the beach. Nuncio Beach. Every lap of the wave drags up some new letter or parcel. The face of the water is dotted with them, as far as you can see in the blackness carried by a powerful current. Collect material for the dead letter office. A will of its own. You make your way along the shore with a big sack. Many of the envelopes are too damp to read, their address is permanently lost, but a surprising number are still legible. There are also parcels. Here and there is a crate, a message in a wine bottle, a sealed cask that is bobbed up out of a shipwreck. Your sack ought to get heavy with all of these contents, but it pulls upwards and away, straining inland towards the dead letter office like an unmanageable dog. You have one dead post. Take soundings. Striking the ground causes the stones to shift and rattle. It's hard at first to hear anything more than that. But if you try long enough and strike hard enough, the whole beach shivers like the surface of a drum. The flotsam letters quiver and align themselves in concentric circles around the point of impact. The next wave brings ashore three or four times the usual freight. I have two dead posts. Interesting. Back to the docks. I should go to the uh, dead letter office. I should feed my letters into the machine. 52 categories. 
After prolonged whirring, the machine begins to distribute seven invitations guilt edged in guilt into the correspondence of the aristocracy slot, two oversized parcels probably containing books and the books tray, one stamped bronze tablet that drops the clang to a Ben marked first city. Can I do that again? Will it be different? It's the same. Uh, is there anything new at the Postman's Tavern? Ask to borrow a uniform. Look, but do not touch. They're polite, even apologetic about your request. You're welcome here, and welcome to take shifts at the dead letter office, but you cannot wear the uniform unless you were a postal employee back in fallen London. Regulations. Blunt Thomas lets you have a look at his uniform jacket, at least. Neat stitching, gilded buttons, a thin but dignified circle of braid at the collar. Inside a patch that goes over the heart, stitched with six red letters. You can't read it, but it makes your eyes itch and your scalp feel like burning. Talk about the, de the stuff below the bed le dead, dead letter office. Someone must know something, or be curious. You don't get far into your questions before the hairless postwoman stands up and goes over to the fire, holding herself tightly. She is whispering, nothing coherent. Fire. Clean. Smooth. Down to the bone. No excuse. Smooth. Smooth like black hairs. Still your fool tongue, says Blunt Thomas. Well, time to go. Well, folks, I have eight fuel. Let's look at the map. Okay, I can try to go one stop south, and then I have to go west. Maybe I can pick up some fuel somewhere along the way. Otherwise, this may be the end of Penny. I do not, I believe I do not have enough fuel to make it back from here. Are those shifting more than... Those are skulls in the water. The Antonine Abyss. And the sound is all awful and horrifying. I've discovered Forlorn. That sounds awful. A soft wind from the east. The impossible scent of pine. Don't you dare forget me. You stand on the bridge with the likely lass's locket in your hand. Keep it. It's a risk for both of you. Shorebound lovers grow lonely and sea captains die young. I'm gonna keep it. You close your hand over the locket. The sea air is cold, but the heat of your blood has warmed the metal of the locket. Keep it close. You have a sweetheart in London. Forlorn. Obey. Commingle. What? the f fuck have I found? Tides of appetite. You've entered a fog bank. Your gunners struggle to blah blah blah. Well, I'm about to run out of my seventh barrel of fuel. Uh, I think I definitely can't survive uh, heading just straight west. So... Oh god, it's the Claymen. Polythreme, taciturn Claymen, evasive clothes colonies, walking like humans, cobble. clothes colonies? Walking like humans, cobbles that groan underfoot. On the hills above, a palace villa of marble, but even that writhes like buried bones in an earthquake. What news from Polythreme? The king with a hundred hearts rules from his palace above the city. He is never seen. He makes no treaties with other lands, but there's unrest in the air. The clay men you speak to are obedient and humble, but they speak nervously of those who are not. The maimed, the rebellious, the unfinished. 
Polythreme is an expensive place to reduce terror. Carry Clayman to London. Are they passengers or cargo? They're certainly the easiest passengers imaginable, unless, just unless, one turns out to be an unfinished man. Sure. Great, I've got them. Uh, what? We are clay. We will work. We will only work. Uh, I could buy some clay men uh, who can work on my ship. This is a part of a ship? Wow, if I had 300 echoes, that'd be great. Don't you have any fucking food or fuel? Fuel would make sense. Food doesn't because you don't eat. Oh, God, this is the worst. Okay. Uh... All right, do I head south and hope for someplace better, or do I head west? I'm heading west. Unless you, uh, unless the Z-Bat shows the Empire of Hands, Godfall is a long way to the west. Wait, what? Godfall. Godfall sounds like a, a bad place to go. Do I want to go over one of those skulls? I don't think I... I do. I think that, that sounds bad to me. What is Godfall? Discovered Godfall. Is it like a chunk of the ceiling that fell down? Is it some place that maybe I can petition to not be murdered by Z or Storm? I don't know. Sometimes, just occasionally, bits of the roof fall off. Be glad you weren't here when this one did. The brawling bearded men who live here call themselves monks. They pay lip service to the stalactite, which fell from the roof, but their chief interest seems to be wine, blood, and shouting. Man, I have... Oh, I need a lot more. Throats of the brothers are dry. Of shouting. Let them tell you about the past and present events of the monastery. They are eager to talk about their history. The stalactite, they assure you, was one of the citadels of the starved men who dwell in the roof. When it fell, a few of its occupants survived to become the monks' progenitors. How does that work, you wonder, with their vow of celibacy? <laughs> they become vague and are suddenly eager to speak of the details of passing shipping. Interesting. Explore the shattered citadel. I need foxfire candles. Bad things will happen if I run out. I need to come back with a lot of Foxfire candles and a flare. Uh, because that's what I need for the other place. Uh, if I survive. Shops? Nothing good will come of this. Uh, did I pick up an officer? No, I think I just picked up a Radis Faber crew to repair my hull. Alright. Z-Bat. Now, if I remember right, it's, I maybe can go through the Sea of Lilies. How's my terror doing? Hmm. Not good. I can go through the Sea of Lilies, and I can stop at the port there. Discovered Peterson's Rift? That doesn't sound good either. Penny, you can make it. Four fuel. Okay, wisdom. Uh, I don't have a prisoner to hand over. I can compile a port report because it's great. Uh, I don't have any money. Can I do anything to get you guys?
guys to to buy from me? I can try to rescue a prisoner. I'm about to run down to just three barrels of fuel. I have clay men aboard who will fetch a nice price. Don't think of it as slavery, because I don't really understand the clay men. Some of them have a will, though. Most of them do not. I wonder if it means that all of them have a will, and it's just locked away someplace, maybe in their hearts, thus the king of a hundred hearts. The world is webbed with invisible lines. You crossed one, tightened them, and it would split like a fruit. Now, if I remember right, I can't get anything out of stopping at one of the lamp boats without money. Oh, if I had read recent news. Or money. I got no shops. Two barrels of fuel. No islands in range. 25% fuel remaining in my second barrel. Fifteen. I'm near the salt lions. Fallen London is directly ahead of us. If I fear a little bit, I can go right between the lions. Maybe, just maybe, there's a way to get fuel at the salt mines, but it looks doubtful to run out of fuel so close to home. 53% fuel remaining on my last barrel. I will just barely make it to Zealport. This is definitely not enough to make it home. I will visit the Unmakers. I lost some terror. Uh, I don't have the money for Sphinx Stone. I compiled a port report. There are no shops. It's time to get into some real trouble. I'm aimed straight for it. Oh no! But being aimed straight for it's nothing. Okay. I have my last... Our fuel reserves are empty. This is the last barrel. Now is Bad Stevner's Abyss going to swallow me up? I don't think so. I, th 
think. I think I've made it. An offer of assistance. We are out of fuel. I can make sacrifices to various gods. Search for supplies for something of use. We made it. Inspection by the Ministry of P Public Decency. Some things are too illegal for the custom service to admit the existence of. The Ministry are here looking for those. Nothing to hide. That's fine. I got nothing to hide. You shrug and invite them to search your ship as thoroughly as they would like. They leave scuff marks on the newly scrubbed decks and take great pleasure in tangling the rigging. They find nothing more dangerous than a moldy ship's biscuit. Collect my messages. Another day, another free evening. That's all for Al. Something has changed in the neath. Holy cow, folks. We made it back. Uh, let us go to the Dark Spectacled Admiral. We'll turn in our port reports. We still didn't find the Empire of Hands. You've been to Demo's Gate, which he doesn't actually care about. Gators mourn. There's something you can tell us about the pirate fleets of the forest? Hunter's Keep. He doesn't really care about them. Codfall. He has nothing interesting to say. He's given me loads of fuel. Uh, Nuncio. Polythreme. Khan's Shadow. Other officials gather around to hear your tales of bloodshed and debauchery, and the jokes about the Khan and the Shadow produces so efficiently and so entertainingly. The one about the Khan and the donkey produces a roar of patriotic laughter and encourages the deputy recorder to unlock the departmental drinks cabinet. Does that mean that I... No. Wisdom. Did the oracles look hungry? Salt lions. They're happy to hear from. Uh... I have loads of favors now. Uh, I've still got the same charge. Um, I don't care about the one damage to my hull. I do care about subsistence. Uh, Admiralty fuel stores. I gained three fuel. I gained three fuel again. Uh, I'm at 15. 15 ain't, ain't bad. Uh, how am I doing on favors? Let's get another one. Uh, that's fine. Uh, 18's great. Maybe next time I'll get to the Empire of Hands. Uh, I'm definitely not doing it today, because that would be terrible. So, uh, uh, alright, uh, let's see what else there is in London. Uh, Roser's Wharf, do you have anything that you want to buy for me that I have? No. Labyrinth of Tigers? No. Alarming Scholar. A memory of distant shores. I gained echo. I've lost the the distant shores. Oh. Offer an extraordinary implication. You've earned enough echoes to buy better equipment for your ship. A new engine or deck weapons would be a good first purchase. The scent of secrets. I will place it with the others one day. One day I will have enough. I leave the university. I've been to the Rose Market. Uh, do I still have a bunch of terror? I will carouse it. We'll stack docks. Lost 30 echo because everything's bad. Trouble and romance. 
The likely lass. I don't think it came down... I don't think I came down to the docks just to see you. I've got business here, but all right. It did cross my mind that you might drop by. Shared warmth, new memories. It's harder to say this, say goodbye this time. Something new. I lost a lot of terror. Deliver claymen. This is where they wanted to be, or at least where they're supposed to be. One by one they rise, uncomplainingly, with no trace of stiffness or discomfort from the long voyage. The deck resounds beneath their heavy tread. A shroomyard manager waits on, on dock, tapping her foot. About time, she says. Here's your payment. Come along now. You might... There's a good construct. Uh, I do need to hire on more crew. Uh, who is... Oh. A tireless mechanic. Engage the tireless mechanic. Soft spot of rust. Spot of rust. Soon to see that. You there. Help me with this spot of rust. Uh, let's go check out my officers. How good are you? It's a chief engineer. She's only worth veils one. He's worth veils eight. And he increases fuel efficiency. So there you go. Also, let's speak to him. I can invite him to dine with me, which costs supplies. And I can learn veils. So, uh, how many freaking secrets do I have? All right. Dine with me. Thanks for the meal and the company. No, no wine. It makes me sleepy. Oh yes, I can sleep. Too easily. That's the problem. He hesitates. There's a draught I take nightly to substitute for sleep. It works well enough and it keeps me sane and upright. But I wish I could enjoy one night's sleep if you could help me. We need a clay man from Polythreme. We'll need a, a mirror to catch box uh, and we'll need to go to Hunter's Keep. I'll explain when you get there. No, I'm serious. I would owe you a great deal. That's a lot of things. Mirror catch boxes are rarely sold in London, but can be found in the Connate and occasionally elsewhere. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Ventner's Desire, I can't help him at all. Uh, I can't help him at all. Uh, London is still the greatest city in the world. I'm going to hire on more crew so that I essentially have more hit points. Uh, gain two crew. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, let's go to the shops. And uh, Iron and Misery Company, I could get the engine power plus 1,000. I could do that. Oh, but then I won't have any money for supplies. Damn it. Uh, those are the frigate guns. Caro's Naval Supply does not have... Uh, I can't buy five Foxfire candles, not at these prices. Uh, Wolf Stack Exchange, I could sell. That's not worth much. Mm. 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 What do I actually have? I have the elderly steeple engine with engine power 800. Hmm. I need to increase my hearts further because it's just what I do. If I had Mooter Salt, I could dine with the Brisk Campaigner. All right, I'm going to go shopping. I'm sad to say I'm actually going to simply buy provisions. Uh, let's get up to 10. Uh, my hold is nearing full. Uh, I could get all the flare. I get two flares. I know I need five Foxfire candles to do the other thing. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it sounds like next week on Tuesday, we are going to be going to descend the great dark pit of the uh, of the rats and their postal service and the other postal service workers. And we will uh, we will check out uh, the depths of God Godfall, I think. I think that's where that was. Anyway, 
uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much for playing uh, and for playing along with us. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you're enjoying the show and you like the sound of my voice or you just want to, uh, to support us making games, uh, which is something that we are working on, uh, please drop by our, uh, our webpage, www.crookedthimble.com, or please drop by uh, our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash crookedthimble. Uh, I'm stunned that Penny is alive still, because uh, that was a pretty risky journey overall. Uh, maybe I'm not taking enough risks, and uh, I'm not losing enough captains. Anyway, uh, take care, guys. Uh, Keep an eye out for more news, also on trickdempsey.com. Generally, it's been uh, been fun playing with you. All right?